Thank you so much, Dale, and thanks to the Exploratorium for, for having us here for this amazing event. Um, my name's Mark, and, and I represent a little robot design studio called Beatbots, and we're most well-known for creating this little character called, uh, called Keep On. And it got its start a few years ago as a, as a very expensive robot, and recently we, we came out with a, a toy version of it. So just to give you a, a bit of a background, we're kind of inspired by animation, and this, this idea of creating an illusion of life is something that, that animators have gotten very good at over the years, using very simple forms, simple movements, to create an illusion of life, to create character, to cr create things that give us the impression of, of emotion and, and intention and desire. And we see robots as, as perhaps a kind of evolution in, in the toolbox um, of, of things available to us to create character. Um, and, and now we're getting to the point, especially with, with tools like, like Arduino and low-cost motors and, and the community of people teaching each, teaching each other how to use these things, we can all build robots with character um, that, that can maybe be companions and friends to us one day. Are we ever going to get to to this to this point? Um, maybe maybe we want to, maybe we don't. Um, but uh, I got started started in in this in this area when I met a, a roboticist in Japan named Hideki Kojima, and he's now my my partner in these projects. He was originally working on this robot Infinoid on the left, uh, which was a, a Big kind of scary mechanical human um, that was that was meant to be like a child, but as it turns out, kids were often afraid of of that robot. So, <laughs> so in uh, in in consulting with uh, with educators and with autism therapists, he was he was getting interested in how robots might be used in in, in autism therapy. He designed this this character Keep On, and it's uh, it's designed to be as simple a social creature as possible. Strip away everything that's not necessary, but, but the basic cues that convey uh, a, a, living, a living creature that, that can perceive the world around it and, and respond to, uh, to the things it sees. And so when we use this robot in, in therapeutic settings, um, we, it's under the control of a human being. And, and that human being can, can take the things that the, this robot sees through the cameras in its eyes, what it hears through the microphone in its nose, and, and, and respond uh, to, to those cues in, in attractive ways. Uh, in in these, auti these autism playrooms that, that we bring this robot, we end up seeing very interesting interactions from kids who are otherwise having difficulty engaging socially. Uh, you see an example here of some some older boys with with autism who uh, were originally engaged in kind of behaviors that are repetitive and and maybe closed closed off from the world uh, but but when this robot is there and it 's kind of responding rhythmically to the to the things that they're doing uh, we see we see them kind of open up. And, and normally we're working with much younger children, but still we see very much the same kinds of things, that, that children are uh, attracted by the simplicity of this character. And we think that the reason, the reason this works is because maybe normally we have a kind of social filter that takes all that complicated behavior and simplifies it down to attention and emotion. If in autism that filter is broken, kids maybe suffer from an information overload. Since Keep On is really only capable of expressing those simple cues of attention and emotion, by taking uh, the person back and interacting through the robot, the child can more easily understand what the robot is expressing, and they're more comfortable with it. And perhaps that's why we see uh, these, these very touching and sophisticated emotional interactions with the robot that we don't otherwise see. So we're doing research in this, and, and we're very excited by, by what we're seeing.
but we're also having some fun, and we're we're make we're trying to tell stories with uh, with Peepon, taking him around, and having him having him dance with with people uh, in cities around the world. And we've been making videos of uh, of these these interactions, and some of them have turned into into music videos. This is a music video for the rock band Spoon that we produced with with Wired magazine. And it's great fun to so I'm actually puppeteering the robot remotely when we're when we're filming these kinds of videos and it's it's really fun just to see people come up and, and to be surprised and overjoyed by by the by the uh, the responses this, this robot makes. So we've we've put these videos on the web and they've they've become rather popular and people email them around and I guess that's that's uh, the power of YouTube. Uh, but but over the over the years we've been doing this, we've gotten just thousands of, of emails and, and comments from people asking to to have a keep on of their own. And of course, that research robot costs thousands of dollars to make each one, and, and it's really designed for institutional use. Uh, but last year, a toy company uh, out of Britain called Wow Stuff approached us and wanted to make a toy. And, and they really, so they, they knew that they couldn't include the cameras and, and all these expensive components uh, in something that ends up you know, retailing for, for under $100. Uh, but they did want to capture some essence uh, of the character, and uh, and we decided that the two things we wanted to to capture are the the responsiveness to touch and the responsiveness to music, and so the toy, which uh, just went on sale for the this this past holiday season um, at Toys R Us, uh, does does those two things, and so I can uh, I can show you that. Um, uh, in in touch mode, the uh, the toy can can detect pokes um, in various places around around its body, and it can count back the the number of times I pat it on the head. And then there's a dance mode in which he can theoretically listen to uh, to a beat. And then dance to that to that tempo, um, or I can give it a faster beat. And so he he dances dances to music, listening to the to the beat through the microphone in its nose. So that's that's the toy, and and we had a, a really great time uh, launching it. Um, in, in New York, we made a giant inflatable keep on, and a person could actually get inside there and dance. Um, so we had, we had that, that inflatable outside the Toys R Us in Times Square. Uh, we were also, th this, this played into a, uh, an advertising campaign for Bloomberg Business Week. Uh, they were, they were uh, running, running a campaign based on some of the interesting stories that they had covered, and they saw this this project as as uh, something something really really interesting because of our plan with the toy company that a percentage of the proceeds from the sale of each toy would go to creating more of the research robots and distributing them to the the research and autism therapy community and so that's something we're going to be we're going to be doing this year and 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 Bloomberg was was really interested in that story and so. This ad was actually on uh, on the BART and Muni posters over the past few months, so it was really fun to walk around San Francisco and and see see a big picture of keep on um, on the on the on the trains and so on. Uh, again, we we just moved here to San Francisco a few months ago and set up a little workshop in in Petrero Hill. Uh, so we're we're really excited about this, and we've got a lot of toys, and we're we're working on uh, designing new mechanisms and new characters. Uh, my my favorite 
tool, I think, is is the MakerBot, and um, we've been we've been using that to to both prototype some new new toys. Uh, one of one of which appeared in I think it was actually two issues ago in the in the robots issue. Um, this little this little do it yourself dancing toy called Spazzy. So this is all off the shelf components. Um, except for the three plastic parts, which can be printed on the MakerBot. This is something that uh, is very easy to build in just, in just a couple hours, and you can still hook it up to a computer, you can detect uh, beats in the, in the music you play, and uh, dance to it. So if you're interested in that, in that you, can, uh, you can check it out, and, and hopefully make your own version. And, and it doesn't necessarily have to be printed on a MakerBot, you can, ma you can make um, these, these parts in other ways. So um, that's all I have to say for now, and yeah. Thank you.